Hello distinguished viewers all over the world. Welcome once again to Simplified Maths Class. I remain your host, Mr. Mike Omini, and today I bring to you the topic compound interest. In our last slide, we treated simple interest. We were able to calculate the principal for simple interest, the simple interest itself, the amount, the time, and the rate for simple interest. And with that idea, we want to see how we can compute compound interest using the step-by-step -step iteration process. And then we can then use the general formula to find the compound interest of a given portfolio a savings portfolio or a loan portfolio as the case may be. And they will show you how to compute uh, compound interest when it is compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, and so on. All right, before we proceed, please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, Simplified Math Class, kindly do that by clicking on the red subscribe and on the bell notification. And God bless you as you do that. All right, so want to try the compound interest. First and foremost, you can be asked to find the compound interest on a loan of 25,000 Naira for three years at 18% per annum compounded annually. Alright, now, before we introduce the general formula, I want us to see how we can actually use the simple interest method step by step to solve this problem before we introduce the formula so that you can appreciate the fact that there is a simple formula to do that easily after knowing the step by step process. Alright, so assuming we are to use the simple interest to do this, in our first year, in our first year, the principal is 25,000 Naira. The time will be one year. That's the first year, one year. And then the rate is 18%. And of course, 18% is um, 18 over 100, 0 0.18. All right, at 18%. Now, assuming we are to use a simple interest. Understand that our simple interest, interest, we said is principal time times times rate all over 100. So we'll take the principal, which is 25,000 Naira, multiply by time, one year for that first year. The rate is 18%. We divide by 100. So what are we going to have? So we are going to have 25,000 times 1 times 18. And then we divide by 100. So we'll simply have... 4,500 4, as the interest for that first year. Now, for the second year, now since you are dealing with compound interest, for the second year, it means that your principal is going to be the previous principal you started with, which is 25,000 Naira. We add the interest at the end of that year because we are compounding interest. So the interest at the end of that year is 4,500. So that is going to give us a fresh principal of 29,500. 29,500. So that is the principal we are going to use for the second year to calculate our interest. And of course, our simple interest is also principal times time times rate all over 100. We did that in our previous slide when we were dealing with simple interest. So we can now take the principal, which is now 29,500. 29,500 times time. For the second year, the time is still one year because we are computing for that year. So it's still one year times the rate, which is 18, all over 100. So we want to see what the interest will be for that year. So we are going to have 29,500 times 1 times 18. Then divide by 100. So we are going to have 5,310. So we are going to have 5,310. Now take note, this was the interest for the first year. Now this is the interest for the second year. So for us to go to the third year, our third year, we are going to need a new principal. The new principal will be the principal for the second year, which is 29,500. 
29,500. All right, then the principal for the second year is 29,500. Then we'll now add the interest at the end of that second year, which is 5,310. 5,310. So that will be the principal we have to use in the third year. All right, so 5,310 plus 29,500. So we are going to have 34,810. 34,810. In compound interest means the interest we have at the end of the year, we are adding it to our principal to reinvest. All right, so this is now the new principal. So our interest for the third year will be equals to principal times time times rent all over 100. So the principal is a new principal, which is 34,810 times time. We are still computing for that year, third year as a year, which is 1 times the rate of 18. So we divide by 100. So 34,810 times 1 times 18. So we divide by 100. We are going to have, um, we are going to have 6265.8. 6265.80 comma. All right. So this is the interest at the end of the third year. Please don't forget. It's that simple. We took the first principal, all right, which is 25,000 naira. We multiply by one year, want to get the interest for that year. We multiply by the rate all over 100. We had four, five interest for the first year. Now, for us to go to the second year, we will take that interest for that first year and add to the starting principal, which is 25,000. That will give us the principal we are to use for the second year. That's why we use 29,500. So 29,500, we are computing the simple interest for that year, which is one year times the rate 18 over 100. We'll have 5,310. That 5,310 is the interest for the second year, which of course we are going to add to the beginning principal for that year. And the beginning principal for that year is 29,500. So 29,500 plus that interest we just calculated will give us the new principal for the third year, which is 34,810. That's how we have this. So we are now going to use that 34,810 to compute the interest for the third year, which is this times the year being one year times rate 18 all over 100. So at the end of the third year, we have 6265.8, which means that the amount realized, the amount at the end of that year will be, you started with a principal of 34,810 here for the third year. So that will be 34,810. 34,810 plus the interest you made at that end of third year, which is 6,265. 6,265.8. So that will give us the amount realized at the end of the third year. 6,265.8 plus 34,810. So what do we have? We have um, 41075.8. So we have 4. 10.75.8. It means that at the end of the three years, we'll be able to have an amount of 41,075 naira, 80 cover. We started with 25,000 because we are compounding interest every year. At the end of the third year, this is what we have as the amount. Therefore, you can now know what the compound interest will be. All right, so therefore, our compound interest, let's do that here. Therefore, the compound interest, compound interest at the end of the three years will be the amount realized at the end of the three years minus the starting principal. If you invested 25000 and at the end of the year you got this, what interest have you had by that yearly compounding? That's what we call the compound interest. So the compound interest now will be the amount we realize at the end of the three years, which is 41,075, 41,075, 80 cover, minus the principal we started the entire investment with, which is 25,000. So we take it out. So when we remove that, what is the compound interest at the end of the three years? So our compound interest will now be 41,075, 0.8 minus 25,000. So we'll simply have um, 16 and 75.8. So our compound interest is 
75 naira, 80 kobo. So at the end of these three years, we've been able to compound interest to this amount. Meaning that at the end of the three years, our investment of 25,000 naira has fetched us a compound interest of 16,075 naira, 80 kobo. So the step I just showed you here is the step-by-step -step method. Now, the problem with this method is what if the number of years given to you is 20 years? Will you begin to do that for year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7, up to year 20, you will get tired. And that is why a simple formula is introduced for you to use to calculate compound interest for any given number of years. So that will lead me to the method 2, which is what you are actually supposed to use. But by showing you the step-by-step, -step, it's for you to understand what the compound interest is all about. So let's see how we can apply the formula, the real formula, to see whether we'll still have that amount at the end of the day. All right, so the compound interest or the amount of a compound interest, the formula. All right, so we want to use the formula method, which of course is um, the method two we are talking about, the second method. All right, so the amount for a compound interest will be given as principal into one plus the rate uh, multiplied by N, the number of years. All right, some authors use N or some authors use T, which is time. All right, so you can use to use you can you can decide to use n here as number of years, or you can use t as time. All right, so let me use time. T, where this is the principal, r is the rate, and t is the time. Okay, amount, principal, rate, and time. All right, so the amount we want to calculate. What is the principal? The principal amount is the twenty-five thousand we want to invest. All right. The time is three years, and the rate, of course, is 18%. 18% 18 is 18 all over 100, and that will be 0 0.18. So 18% is 0 0.18. So let's apply it in the formula and see. So our amount will be given as principal, 25,000 Naira, into 1 plus the rate is 0 0.18. 0 0.18. But T, the time, which is three years, all right, three years. So we'll put three up there. So we are going to have the amount to be equal to the 25,000 Naira into 1 plus 1.18 will give us 1.18. Then we'll raise it to the power of three. So the amount to be equal to 25,000 times, what is 1.18 raised to power three? 1.18 raised to the power of three. 1.643032. 1.643032. So we use that to multiply 25,000. That will give us the amount. Times 25,000. We'll simply have uh, 41075. 41075.80. That's what we have. So we've gotten the amount. Therefore, we can now calculate the compound interest, which is amount minus principal. And the amount is 41075.80 minus the principal, which is 25,000 Naira. That will give us our compound interest. So that minus 25,000 Naira will simply give us 16. Compound interest being 16075.80. All right. You can see that this very short formula we used for the computation of the amount of a compound interest. At the end of the day, we've been able to derive the compound interest, giving us 16,075 Naira 80 cover, which is the same thing we had when we used the step-by-step -step method. The same amount, no singular difference by digit. Everything is just the same by the use of the formula. But you will, you will definitely agree with me that the other step-by-step -step method is quite cumbersome, especially if the number of years given is more than three, maybe five years, ten years. You will waste your time doing it. All you need to simply do is to put it into the formula, and within one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps, you are done with the computation of compound interest. It is that simple. So please take note, this is the formula we use for the computation of the amount of a compound interest. 
we can use it to solve for other problems. Because sometimes a Christian will tell you that the compound interest is compounded annually, which of course is what we did. Sometimes it will be semi-annually, meaning twice in a year. Sometimes it will be quarterly, meaning um, four times in a year. And sometimes it will be daily, which is 365 times in a year. How do we handle that? That leads us to example two. So let us try one more example before we are done with the slide. That we have all these aspects of compound interest put together. All right, so we are going to try a question now. Now, let's say, for instance, number two um, is sum of 80,000 Naira, or let's say 800,000 Naira, was invested for five years at the compound or at the at the rate at the rate of ten percent per annum calculates the compound interest if the interest if the interest is computed is computed if the interest is or is compounded I annually I I semi annually and let's see I I I um, quarterly then IV let's see weekly Okay, so we can have others like, um, let's say, um, it's compounded daily, all right? And then finally, the VI, which will be the one for another day. That will be, it's compounded continuously. We call that continuous compounding. We shall know how to apply all this. All right, so let's quickly try this. Let's quickly try this and see how we can handle that. All right, solution. So, so far, we have the principal amount, which is 800,000. We have the time, which is five years. We have the rate. The rate is 10%, which is 10 divided by 100, and that will be 0 0.1. 10 over 100 should be 0 0.1. 10 divided by 100 is equals to 0 0.1. All right, so that's it. So let's see how we can do this for all the different compounding. I part, they say, let's work on compounded annually. Please watch me carefully because even if I choose to do one and two and I explain how all this is done, you can do it perfectly well. It's all about understanding what to do. All right, so for annually, we have that the amount, the amount itself is given as principal into one plus the rate raised to power the time. Okay, so the amount will be equals to, what's the principal? The principal is 800,000 into 1 plus, the rate is 0 0.1. And then the time we say is 5. Please take note of this. So we are going to have 800,000 into 1.1 raised to the power of 5. So we are going to have 800,000. 1.1 raised to the power of 5. You simply use your scientific calculator to do that. Raised to the power of 5. That gives you uh, 1.61051. 1.61051. So 1.1 raised to the power of 5 will give you that. So you multiply that answer by 800,000. So you're going to have 1288408. The amount will be 1 million 288 288. 408. So this is the amount you are going to have at the end of the five years. Therefore, the compound interest will be this amount minus principal. The amount being 1,288,408 minus the principal sum of 800,000. 800,000. 
So meaning that your compound interest is going to give us um, 488.408. The compound interest will be 488.408. So this is the compound interest we are going to have for this investment, uh, this investment portfolio. Assuming interest is compounded annually. All right, take note of that. Now, what happens if interest is compounded II semi annually? What happens? Let's see how we can do that. For semi annually, meaning twice in a year, understand that when interest is compounded semi annually, you have an answer that will be a little higher than this. If it is quarterly, it will be higher than semi annually. Excuse me. All right, so if it is um, weekly, it will be higher than quarterly. If it is daily, it will be higher than this, and so on. All right, so let's try for semi-annually. Please watch semi-annually. Now, I, I, interest is compounded semi-annually, meaning twice in a year. How do we do that? The formula remains the same, but the only thing you have to do in the formula is if you're dealing with semi-annually, meaning two times in a year, we are simply going to divide the rate by two and then multiply the time by two. That's a simple thing to do. If you are working on semi-annually, you divide the rate by 2 and multiply the time by 2. If you are dealing with quarterly, which is 4 times in a year, you divide the rate by 4 and multiply the time by 4. If you are dealing with weekly, that means 52 weeks makes a year, you divide the rate by 52 and multiply the time by 52. If you are dealing with daily, that's 365 days makes a year, you divide the rate by 365 Multiply the time by 365. It's that simple. All right, so let's apply semi-annually. So if you are dealing with semi-annually, what happens to your computation? Let's see how simple it will be. Let's see how simple it will be. So all we need to do is 0 0.1, which is the rate. We divide by 2. While uh, the time will be 2 times the time, which is 5 years. So we'll multiply the 5 years by 2. So every other thing remains the same. So this will be 800,000 into 1 plus. 0 0.1 divided by 2. What will it be? 0 0.1 divided by 2. 0 0.05, I believe. So that will give us 0 0.05. So 0 0.05. And then 2 times the time 5 will give us 10. Meaning that if you are computing in 5 years, it will be 10 times. Because you are doing that twice every year. So this is going to be the amount will be 800,000. 1 plus this will give us 1.05 raised to power 10. So what will be 1.05 raised to the power of 10? That will simply give us 1.628894. 1.628894. So we are multiplying that by the 800,000. All right? So we want to take that, this raised to the power 10 will give you this. So we times by 800,000. So that will give us um, 1 million 303. The amount will be 1 million 303, 115.7, 115.7. .7. So this will simply give us the amount. But nevertheless, we still need compound interest. Compound interest is always amount minus principal. So we are going to have 1 million 303. 115.7 minus the principal of 800,000. That will give us the compound interest. Minus 800,000. Compound interest will be 50. 50,000. All right. 3115. 50,000. 503, sorry. 503,000. 115.7. Now, if you observe this answer, you see that it's a little bit higher than the one we did for annually. So semi-annually would definitely be a little higher. Okay, so we are done with annually, semi-annually. Let us try quarterly and see how it is. So if we are dealing with quarterly, definitely our result will be a little higher than this. The application is still very simple. So we return back to the previous formula to solve for quarterly. So that will take us to number three, I, 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 which is quarterly. So if interest is compounded quarterly, it means four times in a year, every three, three months. That will be four times in a year. So all we need to do is the rate will be divided by four because we are dealing with quarterly. 
and the time will be multiplied by 4. So that's how the formula is adjusted. The rate is divided by 4, the time is multiplied by 4. So that's how we are to handle quarterly. And of course, by the time we work for quarterly, our answer will still be a little higher than when we did for semi-annually. So let's try that. Which means the amount will be principal 800,000 into 1 plus. The rate was 0 0.1. 0 0.1. We divide by 4 into 4 times the time, which is 5 years. So we are simply going to have the amount will be 800,000 into 0 0.1 divided by 4. 0 0.1 divided by 4 will give us um, 0 0.025. 1 plus. So if you divide this by this, you have 0 0.025 raised to the power of 4 times 5 is 20. So we are going to have our amount to be 800,000 into this plus this will give us 1.025 1 1 raised to the power of 20. So we are going to have 800,000. So 1.025 raised to the power of 20. 1.025 raised to the power of 20 will simply give us 1.638616. 1.638616. So we are going to times that by the 800,000. So we'll simply have an amount times 800,000, which is going to give us 1310893. 1310893.15. All right, so 1,300,000. Now, at the end of the day, after we've been able to get the amount, we still need the compound interest, which is amount minus principal. And this new amount is 1,310,893.15. So we want to remove 800,000 minus 800,000. So we are going to have 510,893, which will be bigger than this amount. As I've told you, so we are still going to have 510, 510, 893, all right, point, point 0.15. So at the end of the day, our compound interest is 510,893 naira 15 cover, which is a little higher than when we solved for semi annually. So the more you compound interest, the more the compound interest will be. So that if you're going into any bank, you know, to actually do your savings, and they say um, your interest will be on compound basis. If bank A offers you interest to be compounded annually, bank B offers you interest to be compounded semi-annually, bank C tells you our interest is to be compounded quarterly. Better go for quarterly. So the higher the number of compounding, the higher your compound interest will be at the end of your investment period so always go for the bank that will give you their compound interest compounded at a higher number of times a higher rate so it means that for all this i would have preferred daily compounding to weekly why someone should prefer weekly to quarterly but of all this is the largest which is continuously but i won't show you this because it has a special formula it will be in the next slide i'll show you that Alright, so we are done with interest compounded quarterly. What I want you to now try is interest compounded weekly and daily, which I know you can do that. So for weekly, all you need to do is to divide the rate. Instead of dividing by 4 weekly, you're dividing by 52. Why? Because it is 52 weeks that makes a year. So you divide the rate here by 52, while you multiply the time by 52. So you'll be able to solve it, the same solving method. And if you are dealing with daily, it's so simple. You divide the rate by 365. Because if you compound interest daily, it means you're compounding it once every day. And in a year, it will be 365 days. So you divide the rate by 365 and multiply the time by 365. And every other thing is exactly the same. So when once you're able to do for annually, you can work for semi-annually, you can work for quarterly, you can work for weekly, you can work for daily. Take note of that. It's only this. Continuous compounding that has a different formula, which I'm going to show you in our next slide. Thank you very much for watching our slide, Compound Interest. If you enjoyed the class, kindly give us a thumbnail. If you have any questions to ask, please don't forget, drop it in the comment section. And we'll definitely respond to your question. 
And of course, if you have not subscribed, don't forget, it will do you good if you, cl if you click on the subscribe and subscribe to our channel, Simplified Maths Class. Until we meet next, I am your host once again, Mr. Michael Mini. Have a wonderful day and God bless you. Cheers.